I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, as sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I bought it as a joke, and it's actually extremely useful. <laughs> well, the problem is I, I I hurt my hands when I clap. You have sensitive, sensitive hands. Well, because I'm a programmer, so, like, I don't have any, like, I have, I have city boy hands. Yeah. Like, I, I live in what could be considered a rural area. Like, we kind of live, like, we're suburban, but, like, really, like, to anyone who lives in a city, this is basically rural, right? Yeah. Oh, like, a real city. Yeah. Yeah, if you live in a real city, this is rural. Like. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've got lots of trees still. Yeah, but like I don't like the outdoors you work. I like I like doing like I like handyman shit, which is weird. Like I'm decent at it. Like yeah. installing a, a shelf or like fixing some electrical wiring thing. Yeah. I can do all of that. It's just like I don't like yard work. Yeah, yard work sucks. Also about yard work, I was jealous of you on uh Friday, because I, I was on Discord after the ice storm and saw somebody clearly still had power because you were playing some MMO. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that I, son of a bitch. <laughs> so, I've gotten addicted to Eidolon. Um, but, but yeah, I had I had power. So, like, I, I don't know why uh, Highland missed it, but yeah, it uh, my parents didn't have power. You didn't it have was power? Nuts. So I was out because I lived between two gas stations for only a few hours, but my parents and, and my in-laws were out for like four days. Mm, okay, um, yeah. That, well, but, that makes sense. Yeah, based on where you are, you'd be a high-priority target. Because they just got to get the gas going because emergency vehicles need gas. But it was yeah. bananas. Because of the baby, we still went you know, went to the in-laws when, before they lost power. Um hang out that there, there, there was probably like, uh eight to ten uh trees just across the roads with an equal number of power lines because the tree took those and just like light poles in the streets just falling over <laughs> it was well, crazy usually, usually on fridays i drive down to jersey to pick up christina yeah and like i i was like it, it was a certain it, it was like three and i was like looking out the window and i'm like what the fuck is i like i walk out and i'm like my road hasn't been touched right yeah uh i can't i can't even like shovel the driveway because it's, it's ice. ice we we had a half inch of just ice <laughs> dude it took me an hour to chip the ice off my car <laughs> so they're smashing it with the uh with a a, a stick so i could open the door <laughs> i dude i broke a fucking um scraper yeah, on yeah. It. <laughs> like it was bad. It yeah. was really, really bad. And like you know, you should like it's a sheet of ice too. So like, super don't drive with a sheet of ice on your car. Oh yeah, that's like that's like a cryptopedia like TL like today I learned like public service announcement thing because you could fucking get murdered by that. Yeah, it was gnarly. Let, I was murder someone else. I just decided I wasn't going to the office <laughs> because of that. I was like, I, ah, I've got a good life insurance plan, but I don't need anyone collecting on it yet. So I was just, you know, at home, and I, I had my uh, uh, curtains open. And I was tip, tip, tapping away on the computer, doing what I could, but I know it, it wouldn't let me connect to the network. So I was like, oh, that means they don't got power over there. And I kept looking out the window. And I was like, oh. All these trees are starting to like they're all just bending over because <laughs> of all the ice and shit. <laughs> and then uh, and it went, and it's like, oh, I don't think I, anything's going on today. <laughs> I'm so glad I I I tore down one of the branches on the tree in front of my house recently. Yeah, because like that probably would have taken the tree down. Oh, I've got a, a uh, I don't know what they're called. I'll call it a knife stick. I guess it's a big stick, so you can trim tree branches. And I yeah, 
like twice a year trim all the shit away from my power lines, which worked out for me because everyone else, they're all, they took out. If you go drive around my house, like all the trees are just gone now, except mine. <laughs> I, I got to keep it. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of the time that a uh, tree fell in my backyard. And you know my, so my backyard is not a backyard. It's no, you're, more like, it's a hill. You just have a hill. Yeah, I have a hill, and a tree landed in my backyard, my hill, on my hill, and it had a fucking um, grapevine in it. Oh, you got free grapes? So I had, I had ants for the longest time. Oh, they like destroyed my my hill. <laughs> I had to like treat it and then re- redo the grass and all that shit and like. Yeah. Everything. Oh, completely unrelated. So, I was at a spa a while ago, and, and I was like, "Huh, slippers are kind of cool." And then uh, I was like, "I'll get some slippers for the house." And it turns out that um, all men's slippers look like you're afraid your buddy's gonna call you gay. For like, this look uncomfortable, and like that they're afraid to be real comfortable slippers. So, okay. I thought, who who would actually wear a really comfortable slipper? And then I thought, all right. If I saw a he- like a heavy set woman in Walmart who like I would have no way of knowing this, but she works. She's on her legs all day. She does something where she's on her feet, and she's just got to go home, take care of the kids, and just all like what kind of slippers would that individual wear? Mm-hmm. These are the most comfortable slippers I have ever You're worn. Channeling. You're channeling Mimi from uh, the Drew Carey show. My sister called it um, Medea Goes to Walmart. <laughs> and <laughs> they're so comfortable. They're these really big, pink, floofy. It turns out I'm I'm a woman size 13. This is my second attempt at buying. My other ones were leopard print. <laughs> <laughs> these are so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Don't regret it one bit. So, so I just want to, because this is a because this is a totally a visual medium podcasting, right? Um, Brandon has held up a flipper, a a, a slipper. It, it's it's like a flip flop kind of, but it's got like this this like bunched like, up. It's a crisscross of pillows like almost. Thing. Yeah, yeah. There's like a crisscross of like these pink pillows, and then there's a white like plush interior like for like a jacket but on the, yeah. the bottom of it and it, it's all in a it, it's all on top of like a dr shoals foot pad basically they're so good <laughs> they're so good they're nice and warm i'm wearing i'm wearing pokemon slippers that i got for christmas nice but i have a problem so i sweat like a motherfucker? That's why the open toe was an important thing. Because then you could get a little yeah. bit of airflow. Yeah, yeah. The closed toe, uh, they end up smelling a little bit for me after a while. So that's a problem. But what are you going to do? There's <laughs> what are you going to do? Cut the toes off. Oh, the, then it will ruin the like structural integrity. <laughs> and then like, then it's over. There's no, there's no coming back from that. That's like... It's it's a pretty well. You could always put a weird top tip to it, but it's uh, whatever. <laughs> I usually I usually just wear it when I walk around, and then I kick them off when I'm sitting. I'm like the Fair. couch or something. Yeah, I have them on right now just because. Actually, I don't really need them. It's warmer up here than it is downstairs. I I have a very high ceiling, so my floor gets really cold on the, on the first floor. <laughs> um. So, anyways, uh, I think we should probably start because this is a fucking Brandon. This is a wild episode. There's, right? I like, saw what you wrote in the Discord, and I got excited. Yeah, so we're gonna get into that in a second. But first, this is Cryptopedia. There's a thing that Brandon says sometimes. I'm John. I'm Brandon. And this week, Brandon. This week, uh, I decided to take. A little bit of a break from stories with a twist ending, or at least that's what I thought when I started writing this. <laughs> right? So when I started writing this, so 
I, I'm on this, like, I want to do Urban Legends grind right now, right? So, mm-hmm. like, last time I did the Dybbuk box, right? So that's an internet Urban Legend. Um, I want to do Slender Man at some point. Uh, I might try to do the rake, but I don't think that there's enough there to do the rake. I mean, Slender Man, two girls tried to murder another girl. So, like, there's a lot to unpack in Slender Man. Rake, maybe not so much. Um, but I was, like, thinking, because I didn't feel like doing Slender Man this week because um, of some things we talked about off camera. Um, or Mike, <coughs> whatever. Uh, so I was like, you know what's spoopy, right? Japanese ghost stories. Very right? spoopy. They're, like, real fucked up a lot of the time. Up there on so, the like, spoop there's meter. This, there's this one... There's this one ghost called the Kuchisaka Ona, which I was like, oh, that's that's a cool one. I want to talk about that. But, like, there's not, like, a lot to it. It's more or less just it asks you a question and then you die. Pretty much. Yeah. Like, in a <clears throat> nutshell, that's that's that ghost story. I like the smiling um, lady. She's always cool. That's that's the Kuchisaka Ona. Oh, is that the Kuchisaka Ona? The, the sp- I, I don't know what she's called. women. Yes. She's got, like, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, like, the Joker scars. But like worse, yeah, yeah. That's that's Kuchisaka Ona. Uh. So, um, I'm like, okay, I'll just talk about some Japanese ghosts, right? Because like that seems fun. There's not as much as I'd like, and a lot of it is very like high level for Japanese ghost stories because like most of it's it's like something that somebody who speaks Japanese collated a few stories, translated it loosely and then, like, published it in a compilation, right? Yeah. Turns out um, there's a lot of academic discussion about ghosts and ghost stories in Japan, which is not surprising, but... No, but that's, that's pretty cool. I will say I was... Yeah. The, the Japanese ghosts are kind of, like, fucked in an awesome way that I was very disappointed when Yokai Watch came out because I was hope Like, it was way well, too PG. <laughs> well, those are Yokai. Like, okay, okay. So, I'm gonna get into this, Brandon. Okay. This is a, there is a whole pair, there's a whole page of me talking about the distinction between yokai and Japanese ghosts. But we'll get to it. We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so, like, I, I decided to take a break from, like, the Dybbuk box, um, but I really, really enjoy the the uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't, you're fucked no matter what happens stories of Japan. Right? Yeah. Like, like, um, The Grudge, for example, if you, if you watch the Juan, like, Origins thing on Netflix, like, there was never a chance that person, those people had. Like, they were fucked the second they entered the house. Yeah. Like, no, no reality in which they're okay. So, like, uh, there's there's this like degree of fatalism to that that is horrifying to me, but also yeah. like hits something. It hits a primal fear point, right? I'll have to check that out. That's so my daughter's of, favorite show. By the way, is We Are All Dead. She loves it. What is We Are All Dead on Netflix? The Korean uh, zombie. Oh, the, they gotcha, like directly gotcha. reference Train to Busan. <laughs> so well, I'll have to check that out. She likes horror horror movies for some reason. Uh, Christina does not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched. I watched it. We watched Smiling Friends last night, and there's a mildly spoopy episode, and it it spooked her. Ah, oh, um, the easy but, spoops. Yeah, it was 2020 it was dark comedy. It's a cartoon. Yeah, well, there is actually a kind of spoopy bit in the fourth episode. Is it um, depressed not... Pim? Huh? Is it depressed Pim? No, it's it's. It's a demon from the forest. I know what I actually know what depressed Pim is. That's from the first episode. Oh, is that from episode one? That's from episode one. Um, but regardless, uh, let's let's get into this, which is basically like um, a lot of the time on Rio are like presented as these things that present an illusion of choice, right? Um, mm-hmm. No matter what you do, you're going to die soon, and it's generally going to be excruciating, right? So, shitty Morpheus. Um, They're just shitty Morpheus. 
I mean, there's one that asks you if you want red toilet paper or blue toilet paper. That's... I can't tell. Is that... That's unironic? Like, that? that's for that's, real? That's real. This that's is an actual real. one? It's the Akamanto. It's, it's a real fucking yokai. Slash Onryo slash Yure slash whatever the fuck it is. But it asks them a question if they want red or blue, right? Okay. And you choose either option and you're killed. And if you just leave or ignore them, you're fine. So Okay. Like, yeah. So if, if anyone ever asks you if you want red paper or blue paper, either just keep shitting yeah. or run. <laughs> Wipe when you get home. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Um. So, uh, generally speaking, though, these types of ghosts are classified as something called an onryo, and I'll get into what an onryo is in a second. But um, yeah. So before I dive in, um, I want to note my primary sources. So the Book of Yokai by Michael Dylan Foster was kind of like the frame for this episode, um, because it has like. Some, <laughs> it has it has like a, a understanding and like a, a rundown of like what yokai are, what yure are, all that kind of shit, right? Okay. Um, and then uh, my other major source is Kabuki Twenty One. I think uh, is the name of the website. Um, which is going to make sense when I get to the story this week. So okay, uh, I'm excited. So Brandon, we're back in the land of yokai, which is Japan. Woo! And Brandon, how long do you think it's been since we visited this subject matter? Um, Japan itself, or like yokai? Like, like Japanese? Well, yokai was the last time we talked about Japan. Uh, is t- Tanuki um, Japanese? It, yeah, it was the Tanuki. But how long ago was that? Oh, geez, I gosh, how long? I want to say it's been at least fifteen episodes. So probably that. Th- oh, dang, that's like thirty weeks. It's it's 2020. It was August. Two years. That was two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Brandon, you want to know when the first time we talked about yokai was? No. It was you. Oh, when was was that? Yeah. Episode nine, which was in 2018. No. Oh, I'm so sad now. That that kind of broke me a little bit when I saw that. So like, yeah. Oh Um, gosh. So I'm. Let's go over some remedial co- yokai lore. Um, yokai is effectively a catch-all term, right, uh, in Japanese folklore. It's more or less any supernatural entity, although there is a distinction. Um, divine beings, such as kami um, and gods and all of those various things, those are not considered yokai. They're a separate thing, right? Okay. Um, divinity kind of makes you not a yokai. If you if you ha- don't have divinity and you're supernatural, you're a yokai. That's like my general rule of thumb for identifying a yokai. Yeah, if you don't have that um, sweet, sweet ichor. Icor? Icor. Icor. Do divine beings have icor? It, well, in, it's spe- spe- specifically in like Greek mythology. Is that a thing? How did I not know that? Yeah, it's... It's um not blood because they don't have blood, but oh, it's the yeah, food um, that flows like blood through the veins of the gods. Yeah, well, it flows through the veins of the. I want to say it was the Titans, and then it's and delicious, the and the gods drink the not blood of the Titans, and it's called ichor. And it's so they eat it because they don't have to because they're gods, but it's so delicious they do anyway. Huh? I never heard that story. And today I learned. <laughs> That's fucking weird. Yeah. Especially considering the Titans are like their aunts and uncles, right? If my memory is correct. They're all kind of related somehow, but also I mean, there's a all lot the of gods are like contradictory stuff in there too. It's weird. Like Cronus was a Titan, right? Uh Yeah, Cronus was yeah. a Titan. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they're like their aunts and uncles. Um, also, like the amount of oh my god, Greek mythology is kind of 
a little bit related to something that happens later in this episode. <laughs> Perfect. Not like directly, but it has a similar theme that's super present in uh, Greek mythology. But we're not. I'm not going to talk about it because it's a fucking uh, moment. All right, and like I personally view this reveal to be like the moment of this episode. Perhaps. Oh, nice. So we're not going to go into any more detail. I'm just giving you a little bit of foreshadowing that there's going to be something that quacks like Greek gods. Okay. Um, so getting back to yokai, uh, it includes spirits, cryptids, monsters, and everything in between. Uh, Michael Dillon Foster notes, yokais are liminal beings who exist in the borderlands of human consciousness and experience. So, like, for example, for the kappa, they appeared in, like, the shallows of rivers and, like, in rivers and all that yep. sorts of stuff. So, like... they got to steal your butt jewel. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're like... They're... <laughs> God damn it. They're, they're, like, borderland creatures, right? So, yeah. like... Um, they also, like, tend to frequent bridges, tunnels, and, like, you know, they're most active in, like, the twilight hours. So, like, really, it's just, like... Honestly, yokai are, like a explanation for that disquiet that you feel in liminal spaces. Yeah. Right? Like, you know what I'm talking about in terms of that, all that. So, this week in particular, I wanted to talk about Onryo, which are a subcategorization of Yure, which is literally Dim, you, and Spirit, Rei. Um, and it's the Japanese equivalent of ghosts. Like, there's certain things different about them, but they are ghosts. Um, now, there is actually, Brandon, I shit you not, there's academic discourse on whether or not yokai are distinct from yure. That, that, that seems like a very specific... So, by academic discourse, there th this... There's not. It's it's no. It's, there is. It's nerd argument, but with an education behind it, right? Because there, there's a certain line Brandon. where like they're like they're 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 splitting the hairs, and they went to school to be able to do it. Brandon. Yeah. That is almost everything in academia outside of biological medicine. Yeah. Like, you're basically talking about academia. As somebody who's deeply enmeshed in academia right now, that yeah. is the definition of academia. <laughs> it's just nerd argument, but more expensive. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. It, it's nerd argument, but, like, <laughs> but with well that, <laughs> Yeah, well written, yeah. Well, not always. Some people are terrible at writing. So, but, like, there's a lot of words. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of words. There's a lot of references, too. Do they? That's, I don't write papers. Do they still had, want you to hit the double space bar after the period? Like you're still using a typewriter? Or is that not a thing anymore? No. No. That's like, that was never a thing. In school, it was? Not for me. I oh, literally wow. never had to write a paper with a double space at the end of it. Yeah. In, that, that sounds like a, that sounds like somebody who, uh, grew up not having computers and is still teaching and is like unwilling to change that is exactly what it was because that's that's not a thing in they still wanted academia. the like your microsoft word essays to be turned in as if they were written on like a typewriter yeah because like cause you know because like, you don't need that anymore <laughs> We pretty much do everything in latex now, and it auto currents itself, so it fits in the smallest space possible given the the dimensions. So like, yeah. like we don't we don't do that. That's like that's like putting double like putting periods in and like um turning them white to like add word count or whatever to the what? paper. You know that I never a thing did that. Did that's I a didn't thing know people did? Wow, or like adding adding um. Making all of your white spaces like a font point higher than the the text. Yeah, the only tomfoolery I, I I was aware of was for um online resumes when you have to turn in a PDF that you include extra basically keywords as white text so that when they have yeah, a computer the, algorithm look at it, it'll uh, pick up on those. 
it's kind of fucking stupid though yeah um like the problem with that is yeah you get it across the desk but like someone's gonna look at it and they're gonna know what you did it honestly doesn't matter because uh I, I I've I've just decided that all resumes are just bullshit because they like I've I had mean, managers get hired where like their manager has me review their resume and they spelled their own name wrong and they've gotten hired and I was like this isn't yeah. a red flag to anybody that he spelled his own name like di- like also means nobody do- like double checked it or read it over for him yeah resumes resumes are kind of terrible. Yeah. They're all, it's all bullshit. It's still suck. Everything, everything being in, in being an adult is performative bullshit. It's all before like a resume should be like two lines, and it's just what work you did in the past. And then if yeah, it, if you work in a field where you have like stuff you can show, then show it, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, like, like that's the secret to people who haven't like crossed into their 20s who listen to this a- adulthood is just like all performative it's all performance it's all bullshit it's all Everything performance do, for the dumbest person to perform to that's mm-hmm. that's all of adulthood <laughs> you're basically you're basically pandering to the lowest common denominator in everything you do yeah like Anything that you do that's important in your life is more or less you being like, I'm going to do the worst thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be the worst at this with that while still being able to do it. <laughs> um, And like, it's really bizarre, right? So like, I, I still struggle like with this in that people make it and do perfectly fine all the time who like don't put in any effort and then i'm just like how do you live that life it's i don't know if it's just endemic with what um i do but there's a lot of like an obscene amount of failing up um well that's 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 everybody's aware of it (laughs) That's corporate. That's being in a corporate environment because failing up is like people not wanting to deal with someone anywhere anymore. So they they elevate them out of their organization or whatever. A lot of the times, yeah, it's, or they elevate it's them out of the place where they can ru- like do the most damage. Yeah, or or they think they're doing less damage. Uh, get the, uh, there, there's a lot of people who show up. They basically like hand them a hammer and a sword and say, do your worst. It's like the best I can describe it. <laughs> Cause you'll be oh, like, <laughs> you'll be like doing a thing and then they'll, they'll, they'll be like, oh, it's without getting too deep into it. It's like working. Like if you work at McDonald's and then they bring in the guy that's going to be in charge of the entire McDonald's and that, but he's never heard of hamburgers before. And you have to like then explain what a hamburger is, and then he makes all of the decisions based from that. I've had exactly that happen multiple times. That's basically that was basically my relationship with my first manager <laughs> at IBM. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so moving back to academia, um, one scholar, Yanagita Kunio. Uh, assessed in 1936 that the two entity types, yurei and yokai, uh, differed in when and where they appeared and who they targeted. So yokai, according to Yaganita, were tied to locations. Like, if one were to avoid the place, they'd be safe from that yokai, right? Like, okay. oh, there's a fucking kappa in that river. Stay the fuck out of that river. Yeah. Right? Like, that's the basic... That's the thing with yokai, right? It's like, oh, there's a fucking dragon over there. Just stay out of that cave. You'll probably be fine. Just don't go in that right? cave. Just don't go in that cave. Don't go in that cave. Um, Yurei, however, are not so regimented. Um, and if they had victims, they would chase them regardless of the location, right? Um, okay. Moreover, Yurei in... So, 
I have some arguments against what this guy's saying, but this is what he said. Um, Yurei were typically discriminant in who they targeted and generally had a link to the individual in some capacity, right? So, like, they were haunting someone's ass. Gotcha, okay. Yokai, Yokai, on the other hand, were a bit more animalistic, and they didn't target a specific person. They targeted, like, whoever entered their territory, right? Yeah. Or, like, offended them in some way, or, like... You're in their domain. You you did something in proximity to a yokai to f- piss them off. Yo- yokai are chain chomp, and... Yeah, yokai are chain chomp. Yokai are chain chomp, and yurei are booze. Exactly, you're... Yes. Funnier. Because booze are good. Yeah, and they do, like, swirl around and go all over. Yeah. Um, so, yokai also are, are fairly ambivalent to time. They're more, like, like not nocturnal, not doctrinal. They just kind of exist. They prefer twilight, but, you know, whatever. Um, yurei, however, tend to appear around 12 to 2, two, uh, two to 2.30, according to uh, Yanagita, which I have also I also have problems with. Um, yeah. Which, two to two thirty is like the darkest time of night. Um, yeah. If you're not operating like in a fucking daylight savings time thing, um, but a lot of subsequent scholars are like, "You fucking dumbass! What are you talking about?" There's. Um, I, I do have to point something out because you glossed over it, and I uh, applaud your use of the word nadir. Mm-hmm. There's, it's, there's, I mean, it it's is in the there. Nadir. It is. It no, is it is. Nadir. But you went right over that, and I was like, "Oh, you like that's a juicy one." You don't. You I don't mean, see that it, one all the time. I, I, I have a vocabulary. Yeah. I don't. I'm not gonna say if it's good or not because a lot of those vocabulary words inc- include things like uh, velocitron and um, uh, 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 all spark and oh, what was the one? Uh, emptura. So hey. emptura is when uh, a a robot is like disgraced, like a transformer is disgraced. Yeah. So they remove their head and replace it with a mono eye, and they remove their hands and replace them with like like spatulas or some oh. shit like that. Basically. Things that are just for a tailor made for a job. It's yeah. real fucked up. So like, um, Whirl went through Emptura and um Shockwave went through Emptura as well. <laughs> so I, I I just have that in my brain. I have oh. the deer and then I have Emptura. So like, you know, normal I, shit. I really wish and there may be I, I, I just don't know as much about that um. Uh, as other people, is there a transformer named Ace? I actually think there is a Japanese transformer named Ace. Oh, John, John, we need to make a movie. We need to write a screenplay about Ace going through Emptura. I'm. I I need a I need a I need more than that. Uh, you need a premise. All right, here's the entire premise. Let's make it as close to an Ace Ventura movie as we can. Ace, it'll be Ace Ventura. Um, do they have pets? They don't have pets. What's a something detective? Ace Ventura, um, something detective. Oh, I see. I see. Um, Ace is a GoBot, apparently. Okay. He transforms into a P-51 Mustang Viper. Uh, fighter bomber. Oh, okay, okay. He's um, he's a retool of Power Glide from um, Return of the Fallen. Revenge of the Fallen, I think. What's this? Continuity. Go bots. He, he looks like he's just stolen straight from... Uh, yeah. Oh, he's an actual literal GoBot, too. So I guess he's not a Transformer, technically. He's a GoBot. So... Eh, still, I need I need a uh, asymptura pet detective style movie. I also it it the reason I asked for like a pitch was because I didn't get the verbal joke. Yeah, I want to point out. Oh, I'm it's bad there, at wordplay sometimes. That's but fine. Anywho, anywho, going back to um, going back to like why this dude's full of bullshit, right? Um, Yurei are like. 
supposed to once have been a human. Oh, okay. Right? So, um, one, one scholar is like, uh, Komatsu Kazuko is effectively like, well, I think Yure are more or less just like under the umbrella of yokai in like the same way that humans are animals. Yeah. So like, Yokai is the supernatural kingdom where Yure is the supernatural phylum, basically. Okay. And then if Yure are the phylum, then an Onryo is a is a class of of Yure. Uh, of Yokai. Um So like Western Go- Ghosts, Yure come in two like varieties really. Like there's two key varieties. One is the like, oh, I didn't know you were a ghost the whole time. Ooh. Oh, right. You know, yeah. like that. It's that story. What a twist. Um, yeah. You interact with the URA for a while and then you're like, and then like you walk away and then someone's like, no one's lived there in uh, 50 years or something like that. Yeah. But like in a Japanese accent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's um, funny. Like, and I'm not gonna do it because that would be racist as shit. No, in my head I was picturing like in Japan, ju- but like for some reason there's a prefecture where everyone just has like really heavy main accents. There's a pre- like the equivalent of a southern accent. Um, I think is the Kansai dialect, which is like Osaka region. Yeah. Um. And like whenever, whenever they do a dub, if there's somebody who speaks with a southern accent, I think that's implied that they're from Osaka. That's funny. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. Um. <laughs> um. It, yeah. Uh. So. <laughs> I don't even know where I was going. Now. <laughs> Um, but basically, it's the it's the oh, I thought that was a person the whole time. Shock reveal, ooh, yeah. type story, right? And then um, there's also the variety of where it's like, fuck, that's a ghost, yeah, right? which is like, fuck, that's a ghost in America, yeah, where you know it's a ghost because like you can fucking see through it or some bullshit. Yeah, you can um, see through it. It's got some extra yeah. teeth and arms or whatever. Naturally, we're gonna be covering the second one. Because um, I wanted to talk about Onryo this week, so I'm talking about Onryo. So Onryo, hmm? Oh, I just had a, a, I was gonna say a thought, but it turns out it was a memory, which I guess are the same thing. Um, No, there's a yokai, or maybe not. You know, now that I'm learning those distinctions, where it it's a human, but like the neck is crazy long, and it's like a go go gadget extendo neck. And That's then okay. that made me remember a superhero from The Boys, and he had that, but for a penis. And yeah. It, <laughs> uh, the, like, religious one? Uh, uh, he was in the, 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 the oh, like, asylum. The asylum, and he, like, yeah. has just that big old ding-dong that, like, shoots out and chokes hey. people to death. <laughs> French guy, was it French guy? Yeah, French guy laughs at that. Or yeah. the, the Frenchy dude. Yeah. Frenchy, I think is his name. Uh, Melder's Milk gets like choked out by it. Yeah, he gets choked out by a dick. And <laughs> Frenchy's like, laughing at a, him. Is that a dick? Yeah. <laughs> There's another season of that coming soon, and I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, also, uh, Ezekiel has like the ability to do bullshit like that, too. That's the uh, the religious stretchy one. guy, yeah, yeah. Who has like, he's who's like closeted gay or at the very least closeted bisexual. Yeah, I uh, yeah. I did some because re- there were so many flies in the show that I thought it they were like CG'd in there and there's like a secret hint clue thing. It turns out there were just a lot of flies <laughs> when they were filming. What in season one? There's at least one fly that is, like, prominent on screen in every episode. Season two, not so much. It it was so prevalent that I, like, I was looking. I was like, dude, what are the... I, I thought it was, like, a hint to, like, a secret superhero or, like, a foreshadow. And it turns out just flies. It'd be funny if they turned it into one, though. They um, should. 
So getting back to Onryos, um, an Onryo is literally vengeful spirit, and one of the kanji uh, for Onryo is the the second kanji in Onryo is the same kanji, I believe, as the kanji in Yure. So like it's it's like literally just the same word. It, it's half the same word, right? Yeah. Um, and Onryo, if you're thinking, Brandon, describe a Japanese ghost to me. First, first thing that cops in your head, just describe it. Just describe it. Uh, it's hard because there's so many of them, and each just, one just the is first individual. One that pops into your head. It's the it's first the smile. It's the smiling woman. Uh, 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 Kamatsu uh, Kazuko would be the first thing that pops into my head for uh, ghost Japanese okay. ghost. So, so I was I was the first thing that pops into my head is Sadako from Ringu. Which is the uh, ring girl? Yeah, that's the first thing that pops into my head. The like long black hair covering the face, super pale, unnaturally pale skin. Um, yeah, bruising, uh, a white gown of some variety. You know, that's that's my like most easily conjured version of a Japanese ghost. Okay. Um, yeah. So, as the name implies, Brandon. Onryo are spirits of the dead who were wronged in life and can exact terrible harm in the human world. The damage caused by an Onryo can range from injuries and killing to even evoking natural disasters. Fantastic. Depending on how angry they are. Um, Because, like, the, the anger of the ghost is, like, directly proportional to their power. Which, like, is kind of cool. Fair. Yeah, that's pretty um, cool. Yeah. Uh, so, vengeance executed through supernatural means is generally regarded as something called a Totari in Japan. Um, Totari is frequently translated as curse, but okay. it's like a specific term, right? Yeah. So, it's like a specific kind of curse. So, I went it's... to the Japanese Wikipedia. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, oh, I was going to say that calling... Th- that a curse seems more like a um other languages have specific words for like we wouldn't have a word for it it'd be like several sentences but they have one word for it it's and like just, shad and frow. yeah and just like chopping it down to one word curse doesn't really do it justice but in a translation it's kind of the closest you can get without adding a lot i i think there's a japanese word for buying too many books and just having them lying around your house I think that's a word. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of well, but there's a lot of words like that. Like yeah, and a lot in a, like, in a lot of different it, languages. The, well, the thing too is like we definitely have words like that that we don't even think about. Oh yeah, I, I'm sitting here trying to think of some. And I'm sure that mm-hmm. we definitely that it, have them, but we but they're so ingrained into our culture that we can't even like fathom that they're a weird thing. Yeah. It, it it's the same thing with idioms, right? Idioms are like yeah. I they guess don't translate. I guess w- windshield wipers. I because I remember having a Spanish teacher, um, who couldn't f- who needed them and couldn't figure out how to go to an auto parts store and just buy windshield wipers. She had had to keep kept. I think she said she was call, saying um, uh, wind window brushes. I think was the closest oh, thing well, that she could try to think. But of. that's that's a translation difference. Yeah, more than. Anywho, um, so Brandon, a Tatari, according to the Japanese Wikipedia article, which I use auto translate, so keep in mind this is auto translated. Um, Tatari is when you can foresee the occurrence of a disaster in some way, such as a punishment by a god, Buddha, or yokai, and when you can you think that it can't be helped after the occurrence. On the other hand, a curse is established by the act of cursing by some subject, and it is not as always possible to predict its occurrence so basically what they're saying is like you asked for a tatari a curse somebody else put on you like gotcha who has it out to get you um but a tatari is something like you did the thing that caused that and yeah. i really want to highlight there's a phrase in there uh that's it can't be helped um and brandon it's inevitable if yeah well but it's more than that. 
it's a very specific phrase in Japanese, and you've almost definitely heard it if you listen to subtitle, if you watch the subtitled anime. Um, it's Shikata Ganai. Okay. You probably heard that. I'm sure point. I've heard it, but so yeah. I also am probably not, I'm also not great at pronunciation pronunciation of Japanese. Um, but basically, it's it still means it can't be helped. Like that's an accurate translation, but there's a cultural context behind it. Um, and like. So I was reading about it, and I was going to include this cultural context because, like, I thought it was really interesting. Um, for some people who live in Japan, it's, like, they hate the word. They hate the phrase because it's, like, fatalism, right? It's, like, yeah. can't be helped. Like, yeah, the government, ki- like, beats us every day, but psh, who fucking cares? Or, like, you know, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, you know, it, not, it's like, too nihilistic. Not, it's, it's, like, a fatalism... It's a fatalistic way of, like, looking at the world. Yeah. Because you're just, like, well, it exists, and there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. Um, other people are, like, oh, it's so zen. It's so, like, it's such acceptance and blah, 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 blah. I personally lean on the side of it's kind of fatalistic. Um, yeah. But if, if I had to, like, give it an English phrase... For like a, a New Yorker, right? Like as a New Yorker, the closest thing that I could say to this is like, oh, fuck it. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are you gonna right? do? Like, like, you can't do a thing about it. Like, so what are you gonna do? It, it? Ah, fuck it. Yeah, like, yeah. Fuck it. I- I'm done. I don't care. I'm I'm out. Yeah. That's that's the equivalent of shikataganai in Japanese. Okay. As far as I understand it, if there's somebody who speaks better Japanese than me, um. It doesn't pretty much only consume their Japanese through anime and manga. Um, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so returning to a Tatari, it's basically the same as when when Eustace steals the slab and curds the cowardly dog, right? Oh, okay. Because like he steals the slab and like. He obviously is going to get cursed. There's yeah. warnings that he's going to be cursed. He's told that the reason he's being cursed is because he stole the slab and that if he returns it, everything will be fine. Right? Yeah. That's a Tatari. Right? And then it, it, it's just something you can't avoid. Right? You did this. You did You did the thing. And oh my, it's the consequences of my actions. Yeah. Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my actions. That's the Tatari, basically. Um, alternatively, another way that you can consider a Tatari, like another like way of like considering the word, is yeah. grudge. Which is very frequently associated with Onryo, specifically the grudge, which yeah. is Juon in so, Japanese. It, it's Tatari... It, would I be wrong... If my mind drifted to to cabin in the woods, to some extent, mm. yeah, it would be pretty close. I mean, Evil Dead, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Evil read, Dead. When they read yeah. the Necronomicon, it, it's that's a Tatari. Like, gotcha. They brought that on themselves, sort of. Yeah, that's more of a Tatari than a curse, because it, like they didn't have to read the spooky book. Bound in human skin. Yeah, it had a face of human skin as the hard co- as the cover. Like you don't yeah, don't, yeah, don't it was, uh, read that out. Let's just put that back on the shelf. I mean, like honestly, they were too dumb to live, right? Like, there's got to be who, a word. There's got to be a word, if not in English, in some other language, for someone who's too dumb to live but still does anyway. Too <laughs> dumb. There's no way that's not a thing. There's no way. Um, there's gotta uh, be. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Urban Dictionary, too stupid to live. <laughs> uh, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary has 445 synonyms and antonyms of stupid. Uh... Words used to describe. There's got to be one word that's like, "Oh, this guy's too dumb there's, to live." There's, 
There's probably a word, but I don't know what it is. Um, I'm going to say something controversial, Brandon. Uh-oh, okay. I'm going to say something controversial. Okay. Anti-vaxxer. Okay, no, I can see that. that I don't know that that's controversial. <laughs> it's a little controversial. But it is, it is kind of a too stupid to live thing. Yeah. Or like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to go with that. Like, and when I say anti-vaxxer, I mean like outright ignoring science for the sake of your belief. Yeah. And like, you know, I think that that could be fair because like another thing that you could call too dumb to live would be a baby. And you could also be like, yeah, they're just being babies about it. Cat. Cat. That's a good one. Cat, cats and babies. <laughs> yeah. Cats are way too, like, they they have zero self-preservation. <laughs> Absolutely it's, not. Like, I mean, they do, but, like, Wait, anything that, like, is... They they have the z- number of- zero self-preservation until, like, a bag unexpectedly crinkles, in which case all of their self-preservation <laughs> tur- kicks on at the same time and then turns mm-hmm. off when they, like, slam into a wall. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, my, so, Brandon, my fucking cat, he, Dakota, gorges himself on food, and then vomits every, vomits it all up every time, (laughs) and it's like, it's like, if you just ate it slow, you wouldn't be vomiting, so, like, I have to give him smaller portions throughout the day, because if I don't, he eats it all so quickly that he throws up every time. My parents, their cat does the same thing. They have to get it a, a uh, it's like a bowl that has a maze inside, and he has to fish the food out of a maze so he doesn't eat it too fast. Very good. I thought about getting that for Dakota, by the way. Um, <laughs> so, Brandon, when you think of an Onryo, typically, like, the most famous ones are going to be women. Um, But... Given the shit that women have gone through historically, kind of makes sense that their ghosts are rage-filled, like monster demons. Fair, yeah, don't absolutely I don't fair. Really blame them, right? Uh, Sadako of Ringu and Kayako of Juan are more or less typifiers in the modern era of this like theme. Um, and Juan, for those of you who don't know, is the Grudge. Um, like that's what it was like. How they brought it to the America America because Juan literally means like the grudge effectively um, oh okay not like literally but like you can translate the intent of it to the grudge um however Brandon all of those all of the every onrio you can think of is just basically an imitator of oiwa now, Oiwa. you probably haven't heard of Oiwa. Negative. Most English-speaking people probably haven't heard of Oiwa. But Brandon, I can assure you, Oiwa's a big fucking deal in, like, Japanese folklore. Um, oh, Oiwa's cool as hell looking. Yeah, so don't look too much because there's a... The, the, we're gonna go over. Oh, spoilers story ahead! In a all, second. Right, all right, all right. There's yeah. a lot of spoilers. Don't don't look up pictures because there's like some fucking crazy shit that happens in this story. Um, now, Onryo have factored into Japanese folklore since at least around the eighth century. Nobody knows exactly when an Onryo first appeared. Um, there's a like rumor that when Japanese capital moved from like Kyoto to Edo to somewhere else. Um, it was because the emperor at the time was avoiding an onryo of his brother who he killed for some reason. And like, there's also discussions of like onryo of like a dead samurai whose body like came back to life and like cursed out everyone and all sorts of shit like that. You know, I hate ghosts. I hate um, ghosts. <laughs> but I'm going to jump to 1636. Okay. And the reason is because this is when Lady Oiwa, um, arguably one of Japan's most famous ghosts, and it's literally called one of the Japan's big three ghost stories, according to yokai.com. 
Um, huh. She died for real. Like we know that there was. Oh, a lady she was an extant, like an actual. There was a we lady, a ho- historical living lady Oiwa. We know there's a historical lady Oiwa. Oiwa. Um, she lived in. She died in, in 1636 Edo, which is modern day Tokyo, um, and was supposedly buried in Moi Miyogoji, a neighborhood in modern Tokyo. Um, there was a shrine that was erected in Yotsuya, which is a neighborhood in Shin- Shinjuku, Tokyo, which if you're familiar with anime, um, you know that like crosswalk walk, like that big crosswalk where there's oh. like, a giant billboard. That's yeah. Shinjuku. Okay. That's that's near Shinjuku, right? Um big that's a like a big fashion place in Japan and Tokyo in particular. Um so there was a shrine that was erected in Yotsuya near her family home. Uh, the shrine, unfortunately, burned down in 1879. It was then erected again and got firebombed in World War II. Oh, good. And then it was then it was restored, it reestablished in Yotsuya, and this third incarnation is the one that's still there today. Um, it's a Shinto Inari shrine, uh, which is almost definitely a subject for another episode. And Inari is like a dog slash like they're usually represented by foxes um, okay they're fertility shrines like you know have you ever seen like the fox with the red scarf yes yeah i had it as my my i had it as my like cover photo for a long time i had a, <laughs> the, the the inari from persona uh okay three as my cover photo um but that's an inari right um they're like fertility it's a fertility thing blah 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 Right. So probably talk about that in another episode, probably in the episode where I finally talk about um, foxes in Japanese folklore, because there's that one book written by the guy who I'm pretty sure wants to fuck the foxes. Um, <laughs> That's perfect. Please do that yeah. episode. Um, well, no, like the author wants the author who could collated the information he, like, gets super sexual about, like, his description of the foxes. Oh, and, God. like, I recognize, I recognize that, like... Like, Albert Ospin levels of uh, sexual, like, des- when he was describing Bigfoot. Honestly, worse. No! I mean, like, so, the Kitsune, um, it's, uh, oh, let's see, I think it's Huliji is... Chinese. What is the Kitsune in Japan? It's a uh, Yumigo or something. There's a particular um, version of the 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 Kitsune in Korea, right? Which is um, what uh, Kumiho. Kumiho. Uh, the Kumiho, which is what Ari is in League of Legends. Okay. Um. So the Kumiho is like kind of a sex demon sort of she looks so there like is a reason an anthropomorphized nine tails it is that's exactly what a, a kumiho is it's a, okay it's a, that, that's what a kitsune like once a kitsune lives to nine thousand years i think or 900 years they get their ninth tail it's oh there's there's a whole episode about kitsune i have to do right? okay <laughs> so i'm not i'm not gonna cover that here because there's like a fuck ton of shit to talk about because a lot of people want to fuck it soon. Not just the person who's writing the book, which honestly, a lot of the time, Kitsune are rendered as attractive women. So, mm-hmm. like, fair. But the dude who wrote the book is talking about, like, the fox. He uses the word the fox and is describing it in a sexy way. So, that's the problem. Huh. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, that's about all I know about Lady Oiwa. Um, there's really not much else to her, historically speaking. There is, however, a play that was written by Surya Nanboku, Nan- Suruya, Suruya Nanboku IV um, in 1825, and it was called Yotsuya Kaiden, and Yotsuya um, is the, like, the place, right? Yes. And Kaiden is literally just ghost story. That's what it means. Oh, mystery so ghost Yotsuya story. Yotsuya ghost story. 
Yotsuya Kaiden is arguably one of the most influential pieces of Japanese horror. Right? The framing, iconography, uh, and setting, like, set the next two centuries of Japanese horror, Brandon. Because we're almost at two centuries that this thing has existed. The play yeah. is a prime example of kabuki theater as well, right? Um, which kabuki theater is is wild, and it's why Japanese acting is so like over dramatic because kabuki theater was super over dramatic, right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot to that, and like, I didn't read the full play. I read a synopsis, and I'm about to give you the synopsis of the play. Okay. And Brandon. It takes two pages to give you the synopsis of the play. It's <laughs> oh God! Wild. How long is the um, play? It's well, I mean, two hundred years ago, they didn't have like it's six acts long. Netflix or whatever, so they probably had more time. Yeah, I mean, like in the eighteen hundreds, you pretty much had like three things to do, uh, four things to do: eat. Actually, wait, okay, you could eat, you could fuck, you could sleep. Or you could die, basically. So, like, <laughs> you can do some people can do all four at the same time. Work, eat shit, fuck. Work, eat die. Shit. Yeah, I mean, if someone's if someone's you a can, sex worker, you can group a couple of those together for sure. No, you could do you could do all of them. If it's if it's a sex worker who has who's got a client who has an eating fetish, and a shitting fetish and a sleep fetish, which is a lot. You could probably do all <laughs> that's all a lot. I imagine time. most of those happen not concurrently. Yeah, I'm gonna assume it's not concurrently. Um, anywho, so it's fantastically popular, and it's like the most adapted play, like a Japanese horror play, in like to this day. Right, it's the most. It's like the biggest Japanese horror story, um. But Brandon, it reads like an episode of Cops. That is this what you were talking about? This is what you were talking yes. about in the Discord. Oh, all right, I'm excited yes. for this. Okay, so, oh, I said 17th century. Well, it's 17th century is when it's supposed to take place. Yeah. It's really 19th century. All right, I'm cutting to um, it's it's 1 o'clock in the morning. You flip through the TV channels to find anything that's still on. And then you can yeah. hear like, whoop, whoop, bad boys, bad boys. And then... Well, but, and it's, then, but it's with a shamisen instead. <laughs> yes. Don't know what that sounds like, but it. I wish I played a shamisen because I wanted to do that. Also, can we talk about it for a second? How fucked up that the... Uh, intro to cops is a reggae song. Oh yeah, <laughs> like the number of of young black men arrested for weed charges on that show is <laughs> like it's outstanding. Yeah, absurd, right? Like that show, the arrests performed on that show have probably contributed more to crime than any one single show in the history of anything. Yeah. Right, but that's that's not this podcast. There's um, there used to be. Uh, I don't know. It was one of the lower number channels back when, like lower number channels at like early hours of the day were like crazy. There was the Russian. It was cops, but Russia. Oh, that sounds awful. It it was crazy. It, well, I mean, it was it was the same, except in it was, it was it was exactly the same as normal cops, but in Russian, I guess. <laughs> there were subtitles. Still... There are one thousand one hundred and nine episodes of Cro- Cops. That's a lot. It's still on the air. No way. There's no way it's still on the air. Uh, nineteen eighty nine, thirty three seasons. <laughs> That, in the wake of the protests following the murder of George Floyd, Minneapolis, Minnesota, under police custody, Paramount Network pulled the series from the air ahead of its 33, season 33 premiere, which is scheduled for June 1st, 2020. On June 9th, the network spokesperson announced that Cops is not on P- the Paramount Network and we don't have any future plans for it to return. 
The episode Party in a Box, season 28, episode 20, originally aired December 12, 2015, featured the Atlanta Police Department officer Garrett Rolfe, who in 2020 was charged with the killing of Richard uh, Brooks during a driving under the influence of this investigation. Um, In September 2020, cops resumed production. The episodes were being produced for international syndication to fulfill contracts that had not expired. Langley did not secure a domestic distributor until 2021. Rocket Rights picked up the show for distribution outside the United States in early 2021, with LTD Media as of 2021 handling the sales in the United States and some U.S. territories. Um, On September 13th, 2021, it was announced that Fox Nation had picked up the show. The season premiered October 1st, 2021. I'm not surprised. No. Um, but anyways, so... Oh, God. Oh, no. no I, I'm just... So... Up until season... I'm just on through wiki. Up until season 15, every episode was just you know, more or less like Coast to Coast 17, Coast to Coast 18, Palm Beach County, Florida 16, Palm Beach County, Florida 17. And then after that, and season 16, they start giving these shits titles. Like the seasons? <laughs> Instead of like every episode just being like Washington County episode 1, Washington County episode 2, it'll be like Ho 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 season 2 special edition, Maui Wowie special edition, Gotta Have It special edition. So it's no longer what like named after the county they're in, they're giving them like episode titles. Tate, oh god. Season 17 has an episode called Tased and Confused. There's, there's, uh, if you look up cops right now, the top hit. Um, is crying over spilled meth. Oh, God. It's, uh, I hate it all. Stolen cars and firearms, take it to the bank, the- tears and fears, third wheeling, we'll do it live. We'll do it live? <laughs> it's on Fox Nation. We'll uh. do it live is the Bill O'Reilly thing. Fucking thing sucks. There's no words here. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh god this is terrible oh this is so uh, bad yeah i i was talking to christina about it and um i was like talking about the fact how like cops is always the thing that's just on in the background like yeah you go to someone's house like for like the longest time it was just that was what was on the in the background when i went to certain people's houses right yeah and she was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it forced me to realize that it's a very white person thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, because, like, most other people don't want to watch cops, like. No. Pretty much exclusively busting minorities. Just because, a- like, that's, it's- that's cops. <laughs> yeah. It, it's poor people and minorities and them, like, doing things that are, like, really really bad like <laughs> really bad <laughs> just feel like some dude just chilling on his porch in like a lawn chair getting fucking tackled <laughs> like this crazy like, shit that has absolutely happened on more than one episode of cops <laughs> and they just put it out there they're like and, <laughs> it, and everyone's like ah oh, that seems normal honestly that's the most fucked up thing about cops <laughs> right <laughs> Like how much they just like the like, extent people are just, to like, which that that is normal. <laughs> that well, it's it's totally accepted, right? Like nobody's like bats an eye at it, and it's like, are, are you fucking kidding me? Like this is clearly problematic shit that you're showing. Yeah. Regardless, um, so let's get back to the episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cops is playing the cops theme song is playing on a shamisen, and it's in Japanese. Um. As this this opens, but before I we get into that, there's like a little like produced by thing. Um, this particular summary is a fusion of three summaries: yokai.com, which is I think the least accurate of the three; kabuki21.com in Wikipedia. Oh, real quick, um, Shamishin, um for those because we're just saying it like everybody knows what it is. Japanese banjo, pretty much. Uh, watch Kubo and the Two Strings. It's a really good movie. It's made by Laika. Um, he plays a shamishin in it. And a uh, shamishin has two strings, and those two strings, well, there's, there's that's spoilers, but... Um, <laughs> it, it, it's significant. It's significant. 
Uh, uh, but before we start this, I'm going to just put this at the top, like right here. Okay. Because for the remainder of this episode, there are three very clear trigger warnings. And <laughs> if any of these trigger you, like, I'm not being, like, shitty or, like, joking, definitely don't listen to the rest of this episode because there is rape, murder, and suicide talked about. And, like, pretty explicitly. I, I I dialed it back, but there's a lot of this shit that's about to go down. Yeah. Um. So, the rest of this episode is not is not safe for people with those particular triggers. So, or just small really children. Really want to like, or small children. <laughs> like, really, <laughs> most people, in all honesty, um. <laughs> And I want to keep like I want to bear like have you keep this in mind. This is one of the most popular plays in the 1800s Japan. Okay. Okay. So the story goes like this: <clears throat> Oiwa is married to a Ronin by the name of Tamiya Iman. Um, that's not an L, by the way, in the copy. That's an I. It's just Sans Sheriff sucks. Oh, um, gotcha. Yeah, the the play opens with Iman Iman arguing with his father-in-law Yotsuya Saman about his marriage to Oiwa. Apparently, Iman is a piece of shit, <laughs> and he's basically the Japanese equivalent of white trash, uh, of like white trailer trash. I yeah. shit you not, because um, so Oiwa had apparently had tried to leave Iman prior to this argument by okay. returning to the family home. And naturally, because this is fucking Edo cops, Iman follows her, and now we're at the part where the cops show up, right? Because the yeah. domestic dispute is called, right? There's, he stopped as by Saman, all good Saman. stories start with domestic disputes. Yeah, pretty much. He's, he's stopped by Sama, Salmon as he's on the way, right? Yes. Which leads to the opening argument. And when I say he's an equivalent of trailer trash, it's because Saman, Saman says to him that Iman had stolen money from his employer, and Sam uh, n- knew that. And not only that, he was wasteful, he was lazy, blah, 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 like, like just calling him out on his shit. He yeah. is white, tr- he is Japanese white trailer trash. Okay. But he's also a ronin, which means that he's not a peasant. It means oh. that he's, like, a higher class. Yeah. So, like, he's a high-class Japanese white trailer trash man. He's Kid Rock. He is Kid Rock in he's, Japan. He's Japanese Kid Rock. He is Japanese Kid Rock in the 1800s. So Japanese Kid Rock um, is naturally pissed, right? Because Samon is demanding that Iman divorces his daughter, okay? And at this point, I assume Iman had whatever the fucking 17th century Japanese equivalent of PBR was. Nice. Uh, because he murders Samon. On the spot, uh, oh, in response, like on the spot, just cuts him down, right? Whatever. Just like the cheapest sake around, pretty much. But Brandon, then he goes because because Oiwa has been like run far away at this point. Yeah, he goes and confronts Oiwa Yiman, and tells her that a stranger murdered her father, and that. He begs her to to, to get re- reconciled and says, "I'll I'll get vengeance on the man who killed your father." Okay, I like this so far. Solid plan, <laughs> Brandon. This is not this is the first scene of the play. This is how it. Oh, opens. this is this, this isn't an act. I thought like, this was like a hyper abbreviation of. <laughs> this is the first fucking scene. So of this the shit's play, just Brandon. wild. That is oh, the wow. first, like, that is the opening scene of the play, basically. Like, the set hasn't changed yet. It's still the same set from when the curtains open. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Pretty much. Pretty fucking much. So, now, Brandon, there's a B-plot, okay? So, there's there's several plots happening, and, like, this is the first version. Subsequent versions have even more pl- subplots happening. This okay. is, like it's opening the same way the boys opens. 
Like it just opens and then you're just like, oh, there's a lot. There's There's just a lot. lot. (laughs) There's a lot. That's that's how I would describe uh, Yotsuya Kaiden is, oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Um... So at the same time, another character named Nausuke is like apparently sexually obsessed with Oiwa's sister, Asuke. And I'm not sure she works at a brothel. Okay. I'm I'm not sure. Well, actually, no. I am sure she is a sex worker at that brothel. I was just gonna say, like, what, what's, what's the job title? Because it's like, there's, there's ones where, like, that's kind of the point, and there's other ones where it's like, oh, she's a Thatcher. She just works on the roof all day. (laughs) Like, why? Yeah, you're uh, focusing your that on the wrong, wrong employee, uh, sir. (laughs) This is very important. I want to like point out this is an incredibly important fact: the fact that she is a sex worker, because it's gonna be relevant later in the play. Okay. Okay. Brandon, Nowske is such a piece of shit. He's being a sex. He is a sex pest to a woman he could pay to have sex with. Oh, Which, yeah. I mean, honestly, to be fair, like s- sex workers have a lot of sex pests around them. But still, yeah. like this just establishes how much of a piece of shit Nowske is. Yeah. Right? Coming Brandon, soon to our st- online stores for fuck Nowske shirts. But wait, Brandon. Yes. But wait. We're already at cops. Now it's fucking OnlyFans. Because guess who enters the scene at this point? Oh, wait. Wait, is there a stepsister? No, it's Asode's oh. husband. Oh. The sex worker's husband. Okay. Enters the scene, whose name is Sato Yomoshichi. Yomoshichi. Um, and the brothel owner... Takuetsu. Takuetsu demands that uh, Nausuke pay the fee if he wants to do business with Osode, which is basically him being like, pay up if you're going to fuck my girl. Right? Yeah. I, I'm i very into this. I can see why this is... <laughs> there's a lot going on. and it's, There's a lot going on. It's my kind this of is, a lot. I, I can see this why is, this is still popular. <laughs> this is some like... Like, this is circle ascended bullshit. And there's so many ways you could shoot this for TV. Like, you could shoot it mm-hmm. like as like a dr- like a drama drama. You could shoot it as like a Game of Thrones type. You know that how it's a, Game of Thrones is a drama, but it's not like yeah. a, like a telenovela type of deal. Like yeah, yeah, like or like a well, Lifetime this... style. The, there's a number of ways you could shoot this. This this is well. That's I why want it's this. More probably that's probably why this is one of the most adapted fucking Japanese ghost stories. Yeah. Um, but Brandon, rem- hey, wait, I forgot ghosts show up. Hang on. I just got yeah. a, like, this is good. And then ghosts. Brandon, <laughs> we're not even to the ghost pit. We're not oh, even to the ghost pit. This is going to be fantastic. And, and this much has happened. This is the setup. We're not even to the part of the story where it like fucking hits. So Brandon, it's oh. not Soday's husband who says he needs to pay. Okay. It's her, her boss, her pimp. Yeah, because it's the brothel owner, right? Like, yeah. Whatever. So, but Brandon, it gets better. A Sode and Yomosichi mock Nausuke at this point. Like <laughs> they take turns mocking him. That's okay? good. Is it like know. this is the how are they are they mocking him like oh you're too broke to like get this but you totally could and probably something like that yeah. I don't I don't know because Brandon like I I wish I had read the pl- like I could find the like text of the play um I didn't find it I didn't read it also because it's Kabuki theater I feel like a lot's lost in just yeah. reading it so like I'd already be missing context if I read the play so like it would the have summary to... was probably. The, the only way to read it would be like, um, I don't know if you ever read these, um, the ver- the Shakespeare plays where like- With the, stage notes? Where like the left-hand side is all like stage notes and explanations and the right-hand side is the literal, like yeah. what the script itself was. Yeah. Yeah. It w- I would need something like that and I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't find it. Um, so whatever. Um, 
But Brandon, what is about to follow is probably one of the most confusing... One of the three most confusing parts of the story. Because there's a lot of confusing parts of the story. Now Ske kills who he believes to be Yomosichi, right? Okay. And I'm going to skip the part where I tell you what actually happened, but it's confounding because Yimon and Nausuke team up. I like a good team up. Nothing wrong with that. Because Nausuke has killed Osode's husband, as far as he knows. Yimon has killed Oiwa's father, who is also, if I read it correctly, a Sode's father. Okay. Yes. And they now are gaslighting both of them that the two murders will be avenged. Murders will be avenged by them. Oh, this is so good. The murders that they committed. Yeah. Now, this is like like Dexter vowing to avenge somebody type deal. Brandon, as far as I know, Asode hasn't seen the body of her husband. Okay. Because of what happens later in it, and I know that she hasn't because of what happens later. Asode. Uh, so Oiwa re- reunites with Yamon. Okay. And Brandon, in one of the most bizarre fucking things that took me 30 times. Like, really <laughs> yeah. Asode gets common law marry, married to Nausuke. Okay. The sex pest. Who Wait, murdered so her many- husband as far as she knows. God. And Brandon, it's a price. Right. This is all right, th- I take this back. This is not no longer like a telenovela. This is Game of Thrones because this is now like all right. Who is you're married to this person? You need a flow chart. You, you, you need, you need a, a flow chart. chart. Yeah, you do need a flow chart. So Brandon, the reason she gets ca- common law married to him is because it's the price of him enacting vengeance on Yomosichi's killer, who, as far as everyone knows, as far as he knows, is himself. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, oh, we're, this is the end of Act One. This I need. I need HBO to pick this up. I need HBO to pick this up. This is the end of Act One. We're not. We haven't even talked about anything supernatural yet. There's at least six episodes in in just those few paragraphs before you get the before you get to the ghost. Even yeah, You've before got there's six a ghost. Episodes. Before the, there's a ghost, it's literally something. called Yotsuya Ghost Story. Yeah, it's it's it is Game of Thrones because like also like Game of Thrones, like a song of ice and like the White Walkers and the whole idea of like the ice and fire shit doesn't even show up. Like it's, it's about some other yeah. shit. Like in the beginning, this ah oh, Japanese Game of Thrones, I love you so much. Mm-hmm. So Brandon, then we get back to the cops a plot, right? Okay, we're back on a plot. Yamon is unsurprisingly miserably married to Oiwa. Because it turns out when you kill someone's father and then force them back into your life and don't tell them that you killed their father and swear vengeance for killing their father for the against the person who killed their father who's actually you, it's not the happiest <laughs> of situations. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. Right, like it's not a great relationship. Mm-hmm. So at this point, Ito Kihei and his granddaughter Ome enter the story. And Brandon, wouldn't you know it? Ome wants to fuck Yamon real, real fucking bad. So bad she wants to buy that fucking cow and get married to him. Oh. oh. She wants his, she wants she... Yamon dick like there's <laughs> no tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And so badly that she wants to get married, but the problem isn't that he's already married. That's never stopped anyone in the past. It's that she considers herself to be less attractive than Oiwa. Oh, I can... Not that she's married. Not that he's married. He's less attractive than... She's less attractive than Oiwa. That that part... 
I'm just guessing that that that's important. That's important. Again, why important. this would be so great for TV? Because I can see in my head where I would if HBO would take that shit or Netflix or who or like oh. And I know that there's some precedence for polygamy in Japan. Um, I don't know if it's like in in vogue at this point in history, and like whether or not Yemon would be the type of person who could be practicing polygamy and all sorts of stuff like that. But whatever. Um, I I still think the more significant ba- barrier to this would be that she, he was married unhappily, but he was married. So like that's the bigger problem about getting on that Yemon dick. Um. But, like, listen, a little bit of marriage is not going to stop uh, Ome, or at least that's what her grandfather, Ito, decides. Ito is a oh, doctor, Brandon. Wait, so he, 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 he's, I guess wingman isn't the right term for, like, intermarital affairs, <laughs> but he's, like. He's the, he, he's the criminal. He takes it upon himself to do, I'm guessing, we haven't gone that far yet, but to do more than encourage uh, her. (laughs) I would not say that's what happens. Because as far as I can tell, nobody's upset that he does this. Okay. So it's not even, this isn't even like slick. What What he's about to do, I don't think anyone who benefits from it is upset about it. Okay. So Ito was a doctor. Oh, wait a minute. This is going in a different direction than I thought initially. Okay. So Ito was a and, doctor. I thought the uh-huh. next, I'll admit, I read like 10 words ahead. I thought it was going to be Ito is a doctor and then made um, uh, just more pr- Ome, like Ome pr- more beautiful, more beautiful, like use his doctor okay. skills to like, I don't know, fix... F- I mean, she's got both ears now. That one eye, it's not lazy anymore, you know? It's kind of... He does kind of exactly the opposite. <clears throat> That's, in all honesty. I, I see where... <laughs> um, So, he, he loves his granddaughter mo- so much that he comes up with a plan. And now, in some versions of the story, I guess Iman's the one who does this, and, like, he gets it from... He gets what he's about to get. What is about to happen, he gets the the item to make this happen from Ido, but in the this version of the story, Ido's the one who's responsible, like whole cloth. Yeah. Um he loves his granddaughter so much that he comes up with a plan to permanently disfigure Oiwa with poisoned facial cream. And now Brandon, keep in mind this is the seventeenth century, so poison facial cream kind of redundant. Yeah, it's probably like, a base. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's a base, and there's also probably some lead somewhere. It has lead. It has lead. <laughs> yeah. It definitely has lead, because it's white. Oh. It's white, and, like, you gotta yeah. get that lead in there for that super-duper white finish. Yeah. So, like, she's already wearing face, like, a face paint or face cream that has lead in it. Like, zero Yeah. Down. So, like, Whatever. The facial cream is prescribed as some kind of cure, but instead, it instantly scars Oiwa, disfiguring her. And somehow, Brandon, she doesn't know that she's been disfigured at this point. Like, and when I say disfigured, like, left eye is drooping. She's got burn marks, chemical burns on her face. Hair is like, her hairline's receded, all sorts of shit like that. All right. So maybe she applied the cream, no mirror. And mm-hmm. she feels a burn, but she's like, yo, beauty is pain. I'm beautiful. So, naturally, Brandon, Ido's plan bears fruit. Because Yemon is fucking terrible. <clears throat> he near instantly gets engaged to Ome while still married to Oiwa because he's so disgusted by how Oiwa looks after this. Okay. And somehow Oiwa doesn't realize that she's been disfigured still. Just forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> um. She's just like walking around sniffing her armpits. Like, because mm-hmm. clearly people are like moving away from her as she walks around the streets. And she's like, do I smell? So that that's right now she thinks she's just stinky. But Brandon, but Brandon, wait. 
So the still married part's still a problem, though, for Yamon. Because apparently there's no no-fault divorce in Japan um, at the time, which, surprise, surprise, right? Um, do you remember the brothel owner from the first act? Yes. Taketsu? Taketsu. He's apparently now Yimon's servant, which, like, I don't know, but that feels like a downgrade for being a brothel owner, because being a brothel owner probably gets you a fuck ton of money. Like I imagine. Real, right? Like, you're probably raking in the cash, but whatever. Um, Yimon, because he wants to get rid of Oiwa, and this is where the some of those trigger warnings came into play, he orders Taketsu to rape Oiwa so he could have grounds to divorce her. Okay. But Brandon... So Taketsu goes to Oiwa, but he doesn't rape her. Now, Brandon, why do you think he doesn't rape her? <laughs> is it because rape is bad in an awful, abhorrent act? I I imagine not. absolutely not. <laughs> of course it's not that. Apparently, the facial cream made her so hideous that he doesn't even want to rape her. Which is like... <laughs> so much is wrong with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't even begin to, like, articulate. Because, like... The fact that he was even going along with it in the first place is like, what the fuck, dude? You run a brothel. Yeah. You ran a brothel. Like, I feel like that's not a problem for you. I guess you're just a piece of shit, right? And then he's even, somehow he's even more of a piece of shit in that, like, he dunks on her appearance that bad, right? Like, it's... There's layers of bad here. Yeah. Oh, stinky, stinky layers. Yeah. And Brandon, he forces Oiwa to look in the mirror, presumably for the first time since she's been disfigured. Okay. So this is the big reveal to her. This is the big reveal to her. Um, She finally sees what's become of her face and instantly realizes that the Ito family has fucked her over. Right? Okay. She attempts to comb her hair to become presentable because, she's like, she's trying to hide the like comb over, hide the yeah, yeah. Chunks fall out. Perfect, perfect. And Brandon, Brandon, incidentally, this hair combing scene is a fan disservice, obviously, mm -hmm. but it subverts the sexually charged hair combing scenes that were prevalent in Kabuki theater at the time. Apparently, there was a thing in Kabuki theater around the around 1825 where there were just like a bunch of super fucking horny hairbrushing scenes. That's okay. Like all the horny hairbrushing scenes. The horniest of hair. But Brandon, there's a visual gag that happens at this point in the story. <laughs> While she's brushing her hair, chunks. A uh, a stagehand is constantly putting more and more hair onto the stage. Like a comical oh, amount of hair onto yeah. the stage from underneath the stage. That's fantastic. This is like one of the most horrifying one of like like the most hor like definitely the most horrifying scene that's happened in the play so far. And they make a joke. Like a massive joke. There's I don't know what else you're gonna do. Like that See, that's the perfect spot like, for a joke. There's so much bad stuff happening, though. Because like, that's like a key story point is the moment she discovers her disfigurement. What's the last they thing make a joke about you it would instantly. expect? Joke. Boom. Drop it. Boom. Right there. Timing. It's all about timing, John. Um. So she's enraged, obviously, and she grabs a sword and tries to leave the house to go basically fucking murder the Ito family. Fair. Um, okay. But... She's blocked by Taketsu, and Brandon, wouldn't she know it, she accidentally stabs herself in the neck and dies of the original version. Ha. Like, as she's going, she like, oh, uh, dead. She just Mr. Beans it. Pretty much. 
And as Oi was dying, naturally, she curses Yamon, which is a very, very critical act. But Brandon, we're still not at supernatural shit. No, the, 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 the ghost play has no ghosts as of yet. I've been talking about this play for almost 40 minutes, Brandon. And we're not at the ghosts. Ghost story. Yotsuya ghost story still doesn't have a ghost in it. <laughs> and a C plot starts at this point. A character by the name of Kohei tries to steal the traditional family medicine of the Tamiya family, which is Yamon's family. Such a Kohei um, move. Mm-hmm. He's killed and then nailed to a door. Oh, that's cool. detached from the wall. So, Brandon, what do you think they did with uh, Oiwa's corpse? The well, he's killed, nailed to a door with Oiwa's. What do you think they did with Oiwa's corpse? They they cut away from Oiwa being dead, and they did this scene, and then <sighs> he gets killed and nailed to a, a a a wooden door. What do you think happened to Oiwa? My guess is not Barry, because that you wouldn't ask me that question. Um. What did they do? I don't. What's a thing on a state you could do? Oh, he's a My guess is that there's some kind of wire play. Did they like get a rope in like su- 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 suspension? Suspend? No, Brandon. They nail Oiwa's corpse to the other side of the door that they nail Kohei to. Oh, good. Double <laughs> double and corpse they drop door. Drop it in the river. That of you know course. Why they did that? You know why they did that? Don't tell me. There's to like. Make it... To make it seem like they were lovers. That's... You know, me and my wife, we love just leaning against Getting the same door. Getting nailed to a door. Yeah. And jumping in the river. That's... Whew. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, what we call Sundays. I think it was supposed to, like, throw people off the scent that, like, Yimon was, suppo- like, responsible for everything, but, like... If anything, it just makes it more obvious that he did it. Yeah. Huh. And we got a we got a we got a screen I got a, a picture from a version of the Kabuki play. Um with a very grotesque Oiwa with I wanna say Taketsu, but whatever. Um Yeah, she's got a oh dro- droopy droopy eye, which is consistent with the few images that I saw before I closed everything. Yeah, yeah. Seems very like straightforward Kabuki looking. Uh, we have a guy in a robe. Everybody's face is painted white. She's clearly not happy, uh, mostly due to the disfigurement. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Um. So Brandon, we're finally at the point where on Rio show up. Okay. Um, on the night of the wedding, the ghost of Oiwa appears before Yemon, right? And Yemon does the whole stereotypical like. Oh, you're fucking dead, blah, 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 blah. And um, he tries to kill the ghost with his sword because ghost wor- swords work on ghosts. Um, it's not impossible and- for swords to kill ghosts. But he slashes at her. And the fucking genjutsu that fucking Oiwa cast on him fades away and it turns out he just murdered his fiance <laughs> <laughs> this needs to and be made into a a, a, a mo- I'm, sh- I'm, I'm sure it's already been made it, for tv there's a, lot. there's a lot of them there's a lot of them actually but it you needs can, there's to, a ton it needs to be done in a way that i can consume it <laughs> okay um but brandon uh <sighs> Kohei then shows up. Okay. And Yamon does it again, and he tries to kill the Kohei ghost. Oh, he killed Ito, <laughs> the grandfather. <laughs> In this scene, Oiwa's, like, appearance more or less typifies what, like, the pop culture Onryo is going to look like. Um, She's dressed in a white burial kimono. Has ragged hair and a white face, which is some visual shorthand for a ghost in Kapuki Theater. Mm-hmm. Um, although Oiwa is a bit distinct in that she has a drooping left eye and that like balding head and like burn from the poison. Right? Yeah. So 
the the people who are responsible for her maiming are dead. Like the two who are like most responsible. The prime, yeah, especially Ito, because he like yeah, made. Yeah, I mean, the thing. Iman's still alive, and he's a piece of shit, but he's still alive. And they move to the next act. So this is the end of the second act, Brandon. There's six acts in this play. Oh, sh- I forgot there's six. I forgot there's six acts. Holy. Six, wait. Yeah, six. So, Brandon. The third act opens to Yama just like pushing the rest of the the Ito household into the river. He's like done. He just fucking murders everyone. Fair. Okay. Like, just dead. Everyone's yeah. dead. Ome's mother, the fucking maid servant, there's no witnesses to the fact that Iman just murdered everyone. Right? Yeah. Also why it should and be turned he- into a movie because everybody's dead. You don't have to pay them after they're dead. Well, that's why a lot of people in the TV adaption of Game of Thrones uh, just kind of go away. <laughs> they ran out of the money. They didn't have the money for it. That's why the show ended. God damn it. So it then- is. The, 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 the individual cast member salaries at the final season was greater than the entire budget of the first season. God. They priced themselves out. Jesus. I mean, they made a lot of money, though. Same thing with Altered... Yeah, they... Oh, no. They made a shit ton of money. Same with Altered Carbon. They, uh... The show got... It got so popular that the, um... When they were negotiating contracts, they wanted so much, um... Money per person, they just didn't have enough money to make the show. The... the, Yeah. But Brandon... So he's trying to cover this up. And then an eel dealer shows up. Oh, hide your horse. So, <laughs> <laughs> which an eel dealer showing up is like peak Cryptopedia because like now episode one hundred two is involved. Yes. Um. So, the eel dealer. Do you remember? Um. Do you remember the first act? How there was another character who did some shady shit. Yes. Yeah. Now Skate finally shows back up as an eel dealer, and he brought he blackmails Yemon into getting some sort of letter that I have no fucking clue what this letter is. Um, but apparently it's a part of the vengeance. I, I don't I don't fucking know. Right. <laughs> so he leaves, and as he leaves, and Yemon is at the riverbank, a door floats up. Is it the door? It's the door. Oh. And Kohei and Oiwa are on it, and they come back, they like their corpse animate to taunt him. <laughs> that's that's actually pretty fantastic. Which this is another visual gag because I think that the actor for Kohei and the actor for Oiwa are the same person. So what they do is there's a hole in the door, and the actor is like on the door like this, and he yeah. like they turn their head to be the two corpses. Yeah, that's so good. And I think they have like different makeup on each side to do yeah. different. So that's so good. And Brandon, there's like a scene in pantomime in which Yomoshichi and Nausuke are fighting over the letter that he just got. I have no fucking clue what bearing it has on anything because in the next scene, it makes no fucking sense that that scene's there. So I don't know if it's a problem with the summary or if it's a problem with the original play, but it's fucking wild. Whatever. <laughs> okay. So at this point, and Brandon, I, I like kind of lost my mind reading this play. Like I once I read this play, I was just like, well, that's the fucking episode. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. there's nothing else I can talk about because this is just consuming all my mental bandwidth now for the rest of the week. <laughs> it's right? a lot. It's a so, lot. It is a lot. This play is a lot. It is a high calorie play. (laughs) It's not a keto play. Not keto friendly. It's not keto at all. It's not keto. At this point, Nausuke and the Osode, the Nausuke and Osode plot comes back into vogue. And Nausuke pressures Osode into consummating their common law marriage. And there is a sex scene in the play. Oh, good. As soon as the sex scene happens, Yomoshichi appears and accuses Asode 
who I want to point out in the first act was a sex worker. Yeah. Of adultery. Is it because it was off the clock? I don't fucking know. Um, and then she like realizes, oh fuck, I did adult I did an adultery. <laughs> Paul, I'm gonna done, kill myself. Done pulled an adultery. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she doesn't kill herself. She death by husband and lover. So like it's kinda like death by cop, but like instead she like tricks them into killing her. Which what the fuck? How did she but like Brandon? I put like I don't a, fucking know. like it, awkwardly they stage did, a piano out of a window and <laughs> they didn't cover that in the summary. So like whatever. But Brandon, did I say lover? Um I meant older brother. <laughs> Because it turns out... Oh, God. This is Game of Thrones. Asone was, in fact, the younger sister of Nosuke. The jo- and apparently he didn't know. This so, is just a lot um, to process. <laughs> there's a fucking lot to It's just a lot. And oh, so man. You might be wondering, hey, why is Yomo CG here? Didn't he die in the first act? No. He didn't. It turns out Nowsuke killed his former master. At which point, all I can say is, Shakita Ganai. Yeah, fair. <laughs> fair. Fuck there's it. A, there's, they wrap up Kohei's C-plot at this point, because that plot's done, right? They just leave it there. Uh, Nowsuke fucked his sister. He participated in killing her. Whatever. Kohei gets another scene in which he goes to Buddhist paradise because he completes, like, his task that he had to do and his yeah. thirst for vengeance was slaked, right? Because apparently it wasn't as great as Oi was, which, to be fair, he was just killed and nailed to a board. Like, really? Not that big of a fucking deal, man. In comparison to what happened to Oiwa. You didn't get fucking... He didn't get gaslit, then murdered, then, then disfigured, attempted raped... And killed because of everything. Yeah. So, like, uh, uh, Gohei's rage is, like, basically nothing. So then the play closes out, Brandon. There's a weird dream sequence. And it's, like, this strange sex sequence, sex scene. Um, So Yemon is, like, basically in his war days when he was still, like, a fighting Ronin or whatever. Yeah. And, like, he's with a, a friend and he encounters this lady and he's like, I'm gonna fuck that lady, right? Perfect. And he fucks that lady, right? So he, he does successfully fuck the lady. <laughs> um, yeah. But unbeknownst to him, it's Oiwa. So for some reason, he doesn't recognize that it's Oiwa, right? Um, And that lady is, it's basically dream catfish. She's basically a dream catfish, right? Okay. As they're have at the climax of the sex scene, ha. Hey, um, oh, the, well, gotcha. What happens? The climax. The, the the fucking lady that he's fucking turns into the disfigured Oiwa, and like the trees around them turn into Oiwa's head. There's a fucking there's a fucking lantern that has like Oiwa's face on it that's projected in the fucking play area, and goddamn Yiman gets drugged to hell by Oiwa. But did he get to finish? I assume when he got drugged to hell, he finished. Like, did that happen right before or right... That had to happen right before or right after? It, it might have actually happened right before. It might have been a ruined orgasm. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. So like, just go, go into hell with a ruined orgasm. So, yeah, you know, whatever. Um... So Yemon flees to the Hermitage to exercise himself, a hermit, Buddhist Hermitage to exercise himself of Oiwa, who then murders everyone in the Hermitage, including the Buddhist priest and Yemon's parents who are there for some fucking reason. Yemon survives, but he's driven out into a driving snowstorm and killed by who else but Yomo Shichi, who Brandon, it turns out, he was his nemesis the whole fucking play. This. 
this plays He's a lot. Also, this image his brother in law. Is, is there an ugly baby in the play at some point? Because there's an ugly baby in this picture. So there is a child. Oiwa does have a child in one iteration of the play. Oh, okay, and yes. and then I guess it. But that's not that's not the child. That's a that's a statue. It's an ugly statue. It's like a, it's like a Buddha statue. Ugly Buddha. Yeah, I mean, some of them are. Not all of them. Some of them. It's not even happy. It just looks like a mildly annoyed, ugly Buddha. I mean, like, there's, like, only one Buddha that's happy. There's, like, a laughing Buddha, and then the rest of them are just kind of serene or angry. And the rest of them are just the Buddha. Yeah. There's, like, several. It's a thing. I'm not Buddhist. I don't fucking know. I have no problem with Buddhists. They're pretty, like... A lot of Buddhists are pretty chill. Some of them are shitty, but like a lot of them are pretty chill. So like I don't I don't fucking like there's no like as far as I know right now, I don't know of any like serious systemic like problems with their religion. So like I didn't really I don't really think about it too much. It just seems to be like, hey, just be chill. <laughs> what I'm what I'm saying is I don't see a lot of Buddhists lining up at abortion clinics and firebombing them. Fair. <laughs> um, so, that's it for the play, Brandon. And, Brandon, at the time of release, this play was fucking successful. They had to schedule extra performances out of season. Oh, wow. To, like, meet the demand. It is one of the most adapted Japanese ghost stories. The special effects... Crazy impressive, including the hair scene mentioned above. They also had like the face painted on a lantern, which projected Oiwa's like ghostly form onto the the stage, and it's like fucking wild. That had to right? be awesome. Like, if, if you're seeing this in eighteen the eighteen hundreds, you're like, shit, son, what the fuck is happening? Like they're pulling out like, all the stops. They this 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 play is like serious business. Hmm. Um. And in addition to being spoop, the play came when there was a great deal of social unrest, which was the Bonsai era. Um, and women at the time were severely repressed in Japanese society, which honestly, Japan still has that kind of pro- kind of has that problem still. There, Let's be real. Yeah. I mean, like, like you you've been watching you've been watching a lot of sumo. They don't all have women to meet in like professional sumo, so like, still a thing. There, there, are, there is no women in professional sumo. They don't allow them. <laughs> no. There is a woman. There is a woman who's like a really good sumo wrestler, who is not allowed into professional sumo. There, there, there's several. Um, actually, yeah. I think not too long ago they had in Nevada the U.S. Um, sumo uh, championship, and they, they've got a whole women's um, division. Yeah, but like it, it's because it's a ritual and all that. Like, it's it, well, it's, it's bad. It's, it's, it's not it's, good. It's half, um, sh- ritual half sport. Sh- Shinto. It, oh, it's more. It's yeah. It's it's, it's very extremely it's, like traditional Shinto stuff. But my point is, women not the best situation. No, no. Um, anything that's heavily clearly. steeped in tradition is typically got a lot really of really bad for women. A lot of a lot of bad baggage in a lot there. Of time, a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. Um. Also, so like in the play, Yimon goes from tormentor to the tormented, and Oiwa goes from no powerful power to all powerful. Which Brandon, I'm going to make an argument here. Yotsuya Kaiden's character Oiwa is the first example of gap moe in Japanese media. Oh, I feel like you dropped the bomb that I have to Google to understand. <laughs> So, con- conceptually, gap. So, do you know what moe is? It's like cute, right? Like moe, moe, um, adorable, kawaii, uh-huh. bullshit type stuff. Gap moe is when somebody behaves one way, oh, and then they behave a different way, and that's adorable, right? Gotcha. So, Oiwa is passive, and then is like filled with rage. So there's the gap. It's yeah, cute shit. Apparently, gotcha. I follow. So that's why it's so popular. It's Does it go the when I explain the other way too? When like it, it can like like it can. badass characterizations of people do cute things. 
that's usually when it happens. That's the most okay. common. Because there's a yeah. lot of that in sumo. <laughs> of them just doing, like, just the most adorable shit. Fucking gap my way. That's why it was so popular. But, um, interestingly, uh, there is a legend surrounding the play, much like Macbeth. Um, there are tragedies that surround it, um, like deaths, accidents, la 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 la. Um, although in this case, it's not the usage of a supposedly actual witch's spell, which is why Macbeth is cursed, for those of you who don't know, um, or alleged to be cursed. Um, in this particular case, Oiwa is believed to haunt the play herself. Oh, okay. Continuing her Tatari even now, bringing misfortune on those who staged the play. Isn't she fictional? Okay. Oh, no, you said she did exist. She, Lady Oiwa existed. Um, there's a tradition that has formed in which the main cast members, especially the person playing Oiwa, are expected to visit her shrine in the Otsuya to ask, ask for permission to perform the play. Brandon, huh. I'm fairly certain that nothing in this play resembles the historical Lady Oiwa. Outside of Other the name, the period, like the, the Venn diagram, the, the Venn diagram is almost too complete circles other than like the the just just coincident touching on the, the edges there <laughs> huh. yeah um yeah so in fact in fact um so there's a wikipedia thing uh, it's not sustained like whatever like there's no citations and i couldn't find any citations outside of this one per oh it was five acts by the way not six i got it wrong um uh, there's this one thing. Apparently, there was two servants who murdered their master, um, and a samurai who found out a uh, concubine was having an affair with a servant, and then he nailed them both to a wooden board and threw it into the Kanda River. So apparently, that th those two things happened. Okay. Right. Um, but we don't know. I don't know if that's what happened because like I couldn't find any like third party sources that verified that. Um, but it seems incredibly unlikely that this story has any basis in the historical life of Oiwa. Um, yeah. Instead, it seems as though Suya Nanboku the Fourth, who originally wrote the play, may have just created the play whole cloth, which is hilarious because you have a bunch of people going to an actual person's like, shrine and praying for like asking permission. For permission Wow. Uh, okay. To perform a fictional play that isn't even based on their life. Huh. Um, so yeah. I wanted to cover more Onryo in this episode, but like, oh, it was kind of her, like, a whole episode in her own right, because that play is fucking insane. I could not have done that justice with a short, a short description. Like, no. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's too complicated. Like, I would be doing a great disservice to you, the listener, if I just said, there's a play in which Oiwa kills her husband who poisons her. Or, like, she gets poisoned and then she murders her husband and the person who... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, there's like, a lot to unpack in anything uh, less than... It, it, ugh. It, it doesn't get at how fucking insane it is and why Oiwa is such a popular Japanese character. Yeah. Um... Uh, I wanted to make a bunch of Malfo jokes, to be totally on honest, because, like, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, wow. Why can't I remember the name of my, my fucking leader in Malfo? Didn't you have the Rhett, uh, army? I, I had, no, that was, that was Nick. Um, oh. Um, oh, God. It's the Japanese lady. Uh, not the outcast. Um, it's Kirai. Kirai. That's it. Um, uh, Kirai has a bunch of Onryo in her army, and she even has an Akurio, which is, um, a very specific type of spirit. It's the spirit of a person who's still alive, who's visiting huh. you. Yeah, it's a thing. Weird. Um, so... Kuchisaka Ona, Teketeke, Akamanto, Hanako, all those are gonna have to wait for another episode. Um, Damn! All right. Just like a just just as like a a preview, 
Teke Teke is a woman who is cut in half by a train. And um, she carries a pair of scissors and cuts people in half themselves. By like an old timey, like Wild West, like guy with a big mustache no, ties her up. No, like, like, um, like 50s. 19? Like post restoration. 1950s? Yeah. Yeah, because the, the, the road that they call out in, like, the thing that you're supposed to say to her is yeah. something that only came into existence in, like, 1955 or something like that. So It's a little yeah. bit late to be getting run over by a train unintentionally. I mean, it happens. It does? Maybe, maybe her shoe got stuck. I don't fucking know, dude. I, I haven't done the research yet. Okay. <laughs> this took up all my this took up all my bandwidth this week. I can see why. Well, that and working on a horror game, but um anywho, that's it for the episode. So, um in terms of plugs, our website is cryptpdcast.com, which I found out, Brandon. Yes. My web host updated my PHP version, so it crashed the site. I don't know how long it was Oh there. god. It's back up. Um I yeah, I bought I I fixed it uh okay. yesterday. So, um, our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Our Twitter is the same. If you want to email us, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com. Um, although our Discord is probably the better way to reach us. Um, that thing is getting really hopping. Um, and we also have a Patreon. And Brandon, do you want to uh, thank our patrons? Yes, we will thank our jackalopes today. We've got Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, Matthew Smith, and the Bushcraft Kelso. Um, we have a Facebook group that I don't do anything in. I kind of hate Facebook. There's a hop in. Need... I try. I try to give it some I, some love. I, I gave it some I love last Face- week. I use Facebook for Messenger more than anything else. Yeah. Although I've been posting my I've been posting my like progress on my game to Facebook, but that's mainly because like I don't want to share it necessarily with Twitter. And I have a lot of friends on Facebook who are game developers, so like I might get some feedback as opposed to like Twitter where I'd be releasing it to the white whatever yeah um, <laughs> if you enjoy the podcast be sure to rate review subscribe um, wherever you can uh, if you have any monster requests or stories send them we are getting more and more increasingly which is nice um, so that's cool um, yeah. <laughs> it's cool uh, you can find me on instagram at donkey underscore hands my website is boyerb.com my email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com and my twitter is at crypto brandon i'm available at mu2057 on instagram my twitter is at jf Dunham. my website is john and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs>